Hello, F Sharp. Welcome back. We are continuing our introduction of F Sharp, and specifically, we are still talking about lists, the first collection type that we started unpacking in F Sharp. Now, last time, what we did is we showed how to use recursion and the match with statement to process through linked lists or just the list in F Sharp. And if you remember, it, 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 it was a little over the top. It was a little absurd and like, man, if that's what I have to do to get anything done in F Sharp, I'm out. <laughs> and, and I would agree with you. And we showed like, hey, there's this mutable way of approaching it. But that's not really kind of how F Sharp really wants to work. It really wants to take advantage of immutability and using recursion to build up results. And the my main desire with that was to start to get you comfortable with recursion recursion because it is such a powerful tool to use and F sharp makes it relatively easy to work with. And so if you are relatively new to F sharp, it's not that I expect you to start just using recursion all over the place, but I, I want you to be aware of that tool so that when you come across a problem that could really use recursion, like you just have an awareness of your mind, like, Oh, this sounds like something that I've heard before. And so like you can find your way back to this because when you have problems that need recursion, like they really need recursion or you're going to be writing some really beastly while loops. So what I want to show you now <laughs> is a much better way of doing what we did last time. <laughs> Cause again, this whole filtering logic, this was, this was a pain. Uh, if what, if you remember what we did is we had this list of values in this case, uh, integers one through 10, and we still have that. We still have my values, but now we want to do this filtering process where before we were wanting to get all the even numbers and we're going to use uh, the built in functions in F sharp to do this. So now what we're going to say is like, Hey, let, let my evens and say like, Hey, my values. And now I'm going to use the pipe operator pipe operator, man, this thing is beautiful. Oh, I love it. <laughs> if, it if it's not clear to you because uh, I have um, ligatures, it is the bar followed by the right, the right arrow, the right um, angle bracket. Yeah, I think it's angle bracket. But when I put them together, it gives me this nice, beautiful triangle. I love this symbol. <laughs> and the reason is it because I was learning R, uh, sorry, no, I knew R. <laughs> I was writing lots of R code and I started to dabble in F sharp and I came across the pipe operator. I'm like, oh my word, this is gorgeous. And I wanted it in R so bad. And so I actually put a question on Stack Overflow. And I should go look it up sometime. It's like a million years ago. Wait, just a sec. Okay. We're back. I wanted to look this up just to prove that like, I'm not just making stuff up, but I asked a question on stack overflow all the way back in 2012. Oh my gosh. It's over a ticket. <laughs> uh, <we're, laughs> I've been working in R and I was like, I'm coming from F sharp and really appreciate this ability. <laughs> and I was like, Hey, I want the piping operator. And this, this predates, the the piping operator that is now in the R language. And so now I think there's some question here like uh I think they're saying now that hey this is actually in the language now. Eh, well maybe not. But this is now in the R language, but um man <laughs> just tell you like I, I was in love with the pipe operator at the beginning. So what is this thing doing? Well first of all I'm gonna I'm gonna write something so list dot filter on x x mod two equals zero. Okay, so we are now bringing together quite a few things from this intro series. So let's just let's just take a moment. Let's take a moment. So my values is that list I created before. It is the integers one through 10. I am then piping. And so 
all the different things that we're combining. We're combining anonymous functions. So this is an anonymous function or Lambda. We are also using a high, um, oh my, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not a higher, high order function. Okay. Yes. Higher order function, which is a function that takes another function as an argument. And we're using this piping thing. So I'm going to actually simplify this first so we can kind of understand what's happening. And then I'm going to bring, bring back the pipe. Okay. It's going to copy this over here and get rid of it. Okay. So my evens is equal to, Hey, I have the list modules. So we've talked about modules at this point and modules is a way of organizing code or functions around a domain. This is the list module which means it has all the functions for processing and working with lists. The language doesn't enforce that. That's just like the design methodology that's used in the F sharp language. You can violate that in your code and people will be confused, but in the F sharp core library, this is how it works. The list module contains all the functions for working with a list. The filter function is a higher order function, which means it's a function that takes another function as an input. It's the function that it takes is a Lambda It is a function that takes a T and returns a bool. So this is a function, which you're going to give it an element and it will turn return a Boolean or not. The second thing the filter function expects to receive is a list of type T and it will return a list of type T. And so when we call filter, we are giving it this Lambda here, which is our, well, if you look in the source code, this is often called a predicate is what they will call it. Hey, let's see if we can just go, can we F12 and just, Hey, hey, hey look, it's called a predicate. I wasn't lying. So this is the actual F sharp source code that we're looking at here. And this is the function for working with lists. And it says, Hey, I'm going to take a predicate. Okay. This filter function, higher order function. This is the predicate. This is the function that will take our values and return a bool or not. And you will notice like, Hey, it's a function. I take an element and it says like, Hey, that element mod two equal to zero or not. So this is going to return trues or falses. It will turn return true if it is even, because this is the logic for testing if an integer is even or not. And then the last argument for filter is the list. And so in this case, it's my values. And so if I run this, I'm going to get my evens. My evens is a list and it's two, four, six, eight, and 10. Cool. What if we want to then double all those values? Okay, well, what we could do is say like, hey, let my evens doubled. Okay, well, what we could do is my even, let's do list.map and say, hey, x, x times two, and we're gonna give it my evens. Not my events, my evens. Okay. So again, we're in the, we're using the list module. It has a map function. I know I'm throwing a lot at you at this point because like, this is the, this is the moment where like, boom, like a lot of stuff is now coming together before we've kind of like a piece here, a piece here, a piece here, a piece here. And like, now we're taking multiple pieces and like, like combining them into solutions. And this is where like that, that special word composition starts to come in. <laughs> so again, map, map is a higher order function. It takes a, oh, come on. It takes a function from T to U as its first argument. So in this case, we are not changing the type. We're just taking in an integer and then we want to double it. And the second argument for map 
is the list you want it to process. So in my, in our case, it's going to be my events. And so if I run this, what is happening is the map function takes each element and applies the function to that element and returns a new list of the transformed elements. So that word map, it's a mapping, I'm mapping it from one value to another value. So you can think of it as a transformation that's happening, but it's called map. And that comes back to mathematical roots. Don't worry about it. You're mapping from one value to another. This function is the mapping. This list is the list where we are taking the values in and transforming them. And I, my even still exists. It's two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. This is still all immutable. My values still exist one through 10. At no point are we actually mutating any of these collections. So we're just kind of processing them. So module function in the list module, lambda slash anonymous function, which is the input for this higher order function filter, and then the values we want it to process. Cool. We've just brought together a lot of things. Now, this is way more convenient than this stuff that we were doing last time. And I wanted to show like, yeah, F sharp actually makes it really easy to do this processing, but this is still kind of annoying. Why do we have to filter, get a result, and then we have to take that result and then we want to take it through this doubling? That's annoying. You're right. It is. Let's do it better. And this is where that pipe operator comes in. I'm coming back to the pipe operator. You saw what the solution kind of looks like. I'm going to bring it up. Um, my solution. So wouldn't it be nice if we could chain the result of this list dot filter and then pipe that into this list dot map. <laughs> oh man. So my values say, so, okay, I got my values. I want to pipe that. I want to feed that into list, list uh, filter x mod. Nope. Try again. Two equals zero. And then pipe the result of that into list.map x, x times two. So what is, what is this pipe operator doing? What it does is it says, okay, I'm going to take whatever's on the left of me. And I'm going to actually like do this so you can see what, see it all kind of played out. The, like, this arrangement and the separate lines arrangement, those are equivalent. And so I'm just kind of showing it and then I'm going to put it back to the previous arrangement. It's like, okay, take my values, pipe that into this and make it the last argument. So if you remember here with filter, it takes a predicate and then it takes a list. With filter, we have given it a predicate we need it. We need a list. And so what the pipe is doing is it's saying, Hey, whatever's on the left of me, make it this last argument here. And so it's taking my values and putting it as the second argument for that filter function. And then what happens is we have this list dot filter. The result of list dot filter. Come on. I, I, Give me that. Yeah, there's the highlight. The result of this is another list. This pipe is taking the result of this expression and piping that into the end of this. Map takes this mapping function and then a list as its second argument. This pipe is saying, I'm taking the result of this expression and putting it as the last argument of this map function. So it's a way of like piping 
the result on the left to the function on the right. And this way we're able to chain these things together. And I could say list dot filter again, if I wanted to say, hey, fun X uh, has to be X greater than 10 for some reason. And I could say uh, list dot map fun X and then I don't know, just X plus two. This is dumb, like, but I'm just trying to show you, like, I'm just piping the result, piping the result, piping the result, piping the result. This is very common for F sharp. And we are going to get into all the different functions in the list module and the other collections modules. But this is what makes F sharp a fantastic language for data processing. Hey, I got some data and I'm going to, I want to filter it. I want to map it. I want, and there's a whole bunch of other functions. Again, like I said, we will get to, but we kind of need to equip ourselves with more concepts. But this makes it so easy to just take some input, process, process again, process again, process again, and just create this, these pipelines of functionality for transforming our data. And F -sharp, because it's all statically typed, it's really fast compared to other languages that I will not mention because I do not want to start a flame war. <laughs> but... By combining the, the higher order functions, the Lambda functions, the piping operator, we're able to make this really nice, clean data pipeline in our code. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, sometimes you might have to write some crazy function recursive function for looping through your list. You might need to do that. You might need to use mutation to do some processing. That is certainly possible, but man, most of the time we are able to use the functionality that is already built into the F sharp language for processing our data in incredibly efficient ways. That's where I want to stop for today because I, I kind of, through a bunch of things together. I mean, and, and I, and I want you to kind of stew on that and think about that. And so what would be really helpful for me today is I would love to hear about some challenging kind of data processing, data munging problems that you've had in the past and that you think would be good candidates for like a demonstration of how to do that in F sharp. Again, one of the things I mentioned last time, I'm kind of looking for, I'm looking to create a little bit of a Rosetta Stone series for F Sharp about like, hey, you did this thing in Python or Java. Like, hey, here's how you would do it in F Sharp. Same thing with like these data processing things. Like, hey, how to utilize these data pipelines to quickly and easily process data in F Sharp. So what, what are some data munging problems that you've run into that were painful and you would like a clean, simple way of doing it? I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. It's been really delightful and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much.